Did you know that nude baptism was practiced in the city of Rome in the second and third century? Did you know that men, women, and children were baptized in the nude? How do I know that? Well, there is a book that was written some time back, but the writings come all the way from the second and third century. Here we have it. The title of the, of the book is The Treatise of the Apostolic Tradition of Saint Hippolytus of Rome, Bishop and Martyr. Now, why is it that no one knows about this? Why is it that Trinitarians today believe that their baptism and their belief in the Trinity is the original faith of the early church? The reason is that modern theologians, apologists, historians, scholars, they are quite secretive about these things. You see, history reveals many things, and one of the things that it reveals is that the early church was not Trinitarian. As a matter of fact, the New Testament church was comprised or made up of monotheistic Jews. And they started teaching that Jesus Christ was the Messiah, and they also taught that Jesus Christ was God. Yet, they had no problem with this. They never thought about teaching a brand new doctrine or, or teaching the people that something was different about their God. They kept the same faith. They kept teaching, though, that Jesus Christ was a manifestation of God in the flesh. Hippolytus was a Catholic bishop, and he wrote this so that his readers would be informed of the way they practice baptism in the second and third century. Now, we know that Hippolytus was a Trinitarian simply for the fact that when he explains baptism, he explains it, he explains it this way. He says that they would have the men separate from the women and the women separate from the children. And they would start with, with either of these groups. And According to Hippolytus, they would get the candidate who was to be baptized and they would have to strip the, themselves of all their clothes. And then they would come into the water. And then the bishop would kiss them and the deacons would be there and they would go into the water with the candidate and they would say, we baptize you in the name of the Father and then they would push him down into the water. Then they would bring him up and then they would say, we baptize you in the name of the Son. And they would take him down into the water again. They would bring him up again. And then they would say, we baptize you in the name of the Holy Spirit. And for the third time, they would be dunked into the water. You say, what a strange baptism. Because we don't practice that kind of baptism today. Well, if you follow the Anti-Nicene Fathers, you will find that Tertullian also practiced the same baptism. He believed in a baptism of three names and to baptize three times. Hippolytus was a Trinitarian, but he also became the first anti-pope in history. What would cause a bishop of Rome to become an anti-pope? An anti-pope is one who sets up his office while there is a pope already in office, especially we're talking about Rome. Rome already had a bishop by the name of Pope Seferinus. What would cause, what would cause Hippolytus to get away from the Catholic Church and start his own Catholic Church? You follow history, you will find that Hippolytus was very upset because Pope Seferinus has, had sponsored a school in Rome which was not Trinitarian. It was the opposite of it. The, the theological school of Rome was oneness or monarchian. It taught that God was one, and yet it also identified Jesus Christ as being God also, but being God in the flesh.
being the Son of God in the flesh. So what an interesting thing to, to see or to discover when you're, you're looking at the Antinicene Fathers. I wonder with amazement to know that so many Trinitarians throughout the centuries have not been told this information. The truth is that some of them believe that the early church was Trinitarian, and that's the farthest thing from the truth. The early church was not Trinitarian, it was oneness. And the baptism that they practiced was the baptism in the name of Jesus. Read it for yourself in the New Testament. It's all over the book of Acts. You can find it in, in 1 Corinthians. You can find it in uh, the Romans, where it says that baptism was into the death of Jesus. So you have much information in the, in the scriptures, but now I'm giving you the history that goes with it. He opposed the school of Rome, and he was so upset at Pope Zephyrinus, and he even wrote that he was upset at the champion of the oneness doctrine, the champion who fought for monarchianism, the champion who was always advocating that God was one, and that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was God also. Who was this person? He later became the, the Pope of Rome after Pope Zephyrinus. His name, Pope Calixtus. I know you have never heard this, but this is something that you can find for yourself in the writings of the Antinicene Fathers. That Calixtus was not only the champion of, of, the, of the oneness doctrine, but that he also came and took one disciple who he also made him into a champion. Who was this other disciple? Sibelius, the one that today everyone calls a cult leader and a heretic. History reveals that Sibelius was a student of the School of Rome. And yes, he was persecuted and so forth, but never more than when after the Trinitarian popes took office and all the, the popes that believed in oneness or monarchianism were no longer there. The school of Rome closed down many years later and only after the fact that there was no oneness popes uh, in office. As a matter of fact, it was a Trinitarian pope who saw to it that the school of Rome closed down. And he saw to it that the teachings of the school of Rome would be totally destroyed. The writings burned. Who was this? The history tells us it was Pope Dionysius, who in 267 AD called a synod together, and he declared that the teachings of oneness and the teachings of Sibelius and his followers, they were all heretics. This is what happened in history. When the Trinitarian Pope of Rome sided with the, the Bishop of Alexandria, who was also a Trinitarian, everything was set. And from that point on, persecution came against the Oneness people until they were in hiding. By the time that Constantine calls together the Nicene Council in 325 AD, the, ones, the majority of people in office or the, the ones who were proclaiming that they were the true Christians were the Catholics. The Catholics that were following after the anti-Pope Hippolytus who believed in a trinity and baptism in the nude. 267 AD, Sibelius and his followers were declared heretics. Now, was this done by the majority of Christians? The answer is no. Only the Bishop of Rome was declaring this. And at this time, he was not the bishop over all the churches that existed at that time. You see, the majority of Christians back then, there was many uh, groups of Christians in the communities of the believers. There were many, many believers who did not believe the way the, the Trinitarian Pope of Rome believed in 267 AD. Most of the Christians believed the way the Bible teaches to baptize in the name of Jesus. The Nicene Creed is history. And although there are Christian denominations that hold up the Nicene Creed as being a Christian creed, they are totally wrong. And the information that leads up to the Nicene Creed 
reveals that the early church did not believe in a trinity. And it was only these men who called themselves Catholic and who separated from the other Catholics who started proclaiming that the, the truth that all believers believed in, in one God and baptism in the name of Jesus. This, this group that separated and called themselves the Catholic Church also started persecuting those who did not agree with them. So the rest is history. The Nicene Creed reflects the doctrine of the School of Alexandria. And the only reason that this council was called together because there was a bishop in Alexandria who disagreed with the School of Alexandria. He was Arius. And he taught that, that Jesus Christ was not God. He was a created being. But the Nicene Creed reveals the battle between Arius and the rest of the, 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 the bishops, which the leaders of, of the Nicene Council were Athanasius and Eusebius of Caesarea. To, to not be confused with Eusebius of Nomenia, which later takes control in other councils. The, the truth of nude baptism is that the earliest baptism of the Trinitarians was in the nude. And a lot of people do not know that if the root of the doctrine is wrong, then the branches of the doctrine are also wrong. If you are sincere in your walk with Christ, I ask that you pray. I ask that you fast. I ask that you study the Bible and go back into history, and especially the history of the anti nicene Fathers, and find out for yourself that the early church was not Trinitarian. The, the majority of Christians in the first, second, and third century were oneness believers, or as Tertullian called them, monarchian. And the baptism that they practiced was not baptism in three names, and especially not in the nude. The baptism that the majority of Christians practiced in the first, second, and third century was baptism in the name of Jesus Christ.